Alright, continuing from last time, uh, I previously got the Phantasma armor that gave the triple attack uh, boost. Now I'm going for the Phantom Ganon armor, which gives the uh, triple stealth boost. Uh, as long as I'm down here in the Pharon region, I figured I would try to get the uh, shock resistant armor, so just pull out this axe. And oh no, where is she? She is sleeping because it is 5.15 a.m. and that's never going to change. So it looks like the shock resistant armor is just simply out of balance for this game. Too bad. Phantom Ganon set. Now I would really like to get the climbing gear as well. So if I paraglide down there, I don't know for sure yet that I have any way to get back up. I may not have enough stamina to get across the water. I guess if I really need to be creative, I can cryonis my way across the ocean, but that'll take forever. So I did in fact spend a good amount of time just trying and trying and trying to shoot clip into this shrine and never actually succeeded, so reload to teleport back up. Not teleporting back up, that's loading, not teleporting. So I'm giving up on getting the climbing gear as well. Um, I have noticed that some things in this game uh, are appearing to be a little bit less stable than usual. So this is the bridge to Kakariko. You may notice uh, that there is no Korok puzzle down below. So that's kind of weird. At least Hestu still works. You're finally awake. So for the time being, I'm just completing the, uh, advancing the storyline. Uh, go to Kakariko, then to Hateno, then to Kakariko, get your champion's armor, get a memory and so on. Personally, I love to complete these blue flame quests on horseback. Wait, what? Travel gate. I can travel. So at this point, I realized that if there's only one travel point that I can teleport to, and there's no stable anywhere nearby, that's going to be really frustrating. So I pretty much made, my, made up my mind at this point to go and get the ancient horse gear. Now you may or may not know this trick, if you talk to Simon to get a picture, the number of pictures you get is not necessarily one, it's any number up to 35, you just have to sell up to 35 things here, then go back to Simon talk to him, I'll teleport up there, how nice. And then you're going to get 35 photos instead of one. Now on my list of questions about things that are missing when we have no towers in the game was the question of what will happen to my Sheikah Slate? Because normally you get your Sheikah Sensor when you activate the first tower outside the Great Plateau. And this question has now been answered. When you get your Sheikah Sensor Plus, you in fact get your Sheikah Sensor. Uh, it's all activated and, and my Sheikah Sensor is normal.
And you notice again, enemies are not spawning there, which is a little bit disconcerting. There they are, after I'm already galloping away. So this does raise some concerns about the stability of the game moving forward. But I guess only time will tell. I believe I've mentioned before that I like doing these blue flame quests on horseback. So much faster, so much easier, instead of fighting a zillion moblins and lazalfos uh, in the rain, just ride the horse on down to it. So much easier, so much better. I really want the travel medallion, but I'm worried about not having enough stamina here. And I only brought one stamina potion. So that's not the reason I kept this clip in. The reason I kept this clip in is this thing right here. Seems like... I don't know, maybe this is just some more game instability that's caused by having blood moons disabled? I don't know. I know that when I came back here the second time with more stamina, that same thing didn't happen again. This part here caught me by surprise because I want the travel medallion, but apparently these gates are connected with completing the shrine, so what am I going to do? Well, it turns out this shrine is actually not that difficult to clip into and just complete the shrine, so problem solved. It's funny though, this big gate seems to be connected with the shrine's travel gate, but... I don't care, that's not a problem. The thing that I came for is down here. Now, something I think most people don't realize is that all these zillions of guardians down here come active all at the same time if you grab the diamond circlet. But as long as you don't grab the diamond circlet, you can kill them one by one by one. If this was a normal game, I would love to use this place as an area for farming guardian parts, so I would not grab the diamond circlet at all. But since this is a game where these monsters are not going to reappear ever, I might as well just grab it. And in doing so, discover that there were actually two guardians that I missed in my initial rounds. Here's a fun little exploit in the game. If we come up here into this little structure that Yonobo is going to be in later, and we place our travel medallion here, then we can completely skip this entire side quest. And I think that's where we'll cut this one off. Until next time, see you later.